sometimes we want to be able to restructure a binary search tree without damaging its binary search tree properties. To do so, we can make use of what are called AVL rotations. So here I have an example tree where I have some parent node B, some child node A, and then to the right of B, I have a right subtree called Z. This subtree could either be one node, maybe an entire subtree, or maybe it could be empty. Maybe this is just a null pointer. But regardless, there's some right entity, right child. And similarly, A has two children, X and Y, where again, each of these, so I'm denoting triangles to mean potential subtrees. So X, Y, and Z could either be a single node, they could be an entire subtree, or they could all just be empty potentially. So just some descendant of some sort. So given this tree structure, we could do what's called a right AVL rotation, which is somewhat like a clockwise rotation, where we make A be the parent, we make B become its right child, X remains the left child of A, Z remains the right child of B, but then Y used to be the right child of A and now becomes the left child of B. So this was a lot of steps, but let's just break it down just to kind of understand things. So in this original tree, A is the left child of B. That means that A is less than B. And also Z is the right child of B, meaning everything in this Z subtree is greater than B. And therefore, because B is greater than A, is also greater than A. Now for A, the X subtree is the left descendant of A, meaning every single node in X is less than A, and therefore also less than B. And then also every node in Y is greater than A, but less than B. So let's maybe write some of these down. So we know that B is greater than A. We know that B is greater than Z. Oh, sorry. We know B is less than Z, every node in Z, because that is the right subtree. And we know B is greater than X because it's on its left side. And we know B is greater than Y. And let's think of node A. We know A is less than B. We know A is less than Z because Z is larger than B. B is larger than A, therefore Z is larger than A. We know A is less than everything in Y because Y is the right subtree of A. And we know A is greater than X. So in this AVL rotation, the things that I've colored in dark blue, so X and the edge going into X, Z and the edge going into Z, those remain completely unchanged. So originally, X was the left, uh, the left child of A. After the rotation, X is still the left child of A, assuming I'm doing a right rotation from here to here. And similarly, Z before the rotation was the right child of B, and after the rotation, it's still the right child of B. So the only things that I'm changing are B, A, and Y, and specifically what their edge relationships are. So why am I guaranteed that this will work? Well, I'm making A be the parent of B, and B is becoming the right child of A. Well, I know by definition in my original tree, A was the left child of B, so A was less than B. So in this scenario, A is less than B, so this must work. So now the last question is, how am I guaranteed that this will be fine? That I can just stick this subtree, however many nodes it may have, that used to be the right child of A, and just make it the left child of B. As I mentioned, Y is in the left subtree of B in my original tree, meaning everything in Y is less than B. And it's in the right subtree of A, meaning everything in Y is greater than A. So here, the same thing has occurred. It's in the right subtree 
of b, meaning everything in y is greater than a. Uh, sorry, it's in the right subtree of a, meaning everything in y is greater than a. And it's in the left subtree of b, meaning everything in y is less than b. So it's not as clear, but because of these properties of y, this is guaranteed to hold. So that was my description going from this tree, doing a right ABL rotation and ending up at this tree. And likewise, I could start at this tree, do a left AVL rotation and end up at this tree. So the key thing to remember is just these are the pointer changes that happen. X and Z remain unchanged. They remain the left child of A and the right child of Z, course, uh, respectively. And importantly, the BST properties are maintained. Let's try an example. Let's say I have this binary search tree. The root is 63. Its left child is 42. Its left child is 21. And let's say I want to do a right AVL rotation. So I want to rotate this clockwise, where these two nodes are the nodes that I'm rotating. So in my prior notation, this was A, this was B. For the sake of simplicity, let's just also note down all the other letters from my prior example. So let's say this is X. Let's say this is Y, which is just a null pointer. There's an empty Y subtree. And this is an empty Z subtree. So these are empty. X is the node 21. So I'm doing a right rotation, which means A becomes the new parent and B drops down. So I'm going to draw A, which is 42. And then now B drops down and becomes its right child. And let's fill in the easy one. So remember we said X and Z, the two outer parts, remain unchanged. So X remains the left child of A. Z, which was an empty pointer, remains the right child of B. So 63's right child remains empty. And then Y was the right child of A, but now it becomes the left child of B. Well, here, Y was a null pointer. Therefore, the left child of V should be that same just null pointer. So this is the result of doing a right rotation on this original tree. Let's try a trickier example. Let's say that I want to do a left AVL rotation, so counterclockwise, on these two nodes. Let's see what happens. Well, first of all, the ancestor should remain unchanged. So one should still be the ancestor. I want 8 to be the new parent, and I want 5 to drop down, so let me draw that. Now, instead of 5 being the right child of 1, I'm rotating 8 upward, so 8 would be the right child of 1. And 5, because I'm rotating counterclockwise, 5 would drop down to be the left child of 8. And remember, the left subtree... And the right subtree remain unchanged. So this means that 3, 2, 4, this exact subtree should remain the left subtree of 5. So let me just copy that down. This remains completely unchanged. And it remains the left child of what it was before. And similarly, this subtree, so just 9, remains the right subtree of this node. So 9 remains the right child of 8. But then, let's see, I'll use this color. But then this subtree, so this was x, this was z, this was y. This subtree here used to be the left child 
of this node, but now it must be the right child of this node. So remember, this entire subtree is in the right subtree of five, meaning it's greater than five. Every node is greater than five. And it's in the left subtree of eight, meaning every node is less than eight. So now when I rotate it, this becomes the right child of five, which I'm guaranteed because in this original example, it was in the right subtree of five. So let me first copy down that subtree unchanged, but just kind of leaving it disconnected. There we go. And it used to be the right child of eight, but now it becomes the left child of five. So now I have successfully conducted a left rotation of this tree at these two nodes. So just to reiterate, this became the parent, this became the child, this relationship remain unchanged, this relationship remained unchanged, and then this relationship went from being the left child of the lower one to now being the right child of the lower one. 